Now I would like to call back our department head, Direk Bhattasachar. All right, guys. Let me see. How many A1s and A2s in the classroom here in the conference hall? Any? B1s? B1? Not many. B2? Where are the others? Where are they? Okay. I don't think so. That's not the whole people who should be here. Anyway, I'm going to use the target language as A2 plus or B1 because it means that if you pass with the proficiency exam, you have to be in your faculty departments. And you're B1 and B2, which means that you can't pass. Am I right? So we'll use basic language, then you can understand everything about it. So let's begin. Okay, the most important thing. Right now, maybe you don't believe that that's a very important thing to have that Pearson Assured Certificate, but actually it is very important. You can understand the importance of it at the end of the graduation, at the end of the school years, because it proves that, we're internationally proven that we are a Pearson Assured Organization and this certificate shows that you are an accredited person and you're actually a really B2 band student or person in level, in your English level. And we also give you the university certificate. That's also another important thing in your life, in your career. Okay. <clears throat> what do we have in hand? I know that people are going to watch this video later on. I'm talking about the A1 and A2 students. So let's begin with the A1 thing. In A1 and A2, as you can see, they have four modules, one, two, three, four. And A2 is the same. Why? Because A1 is the beginner level and A2 is the elementary level. We call them basic levels. That means that they don't know English well. And that is why they have four modules of studying. A module consists of eight weeks. It means that if we have four modules, then we can have 32 weeks of study for A1 and A2. Got a deal? What about B1 and B2? B1 and B2 story is different. In B1 and B2, you have, as you can see, I'm sorry, you have two modules, one and two, one and two. It means that somewhere in February, according to your academic calendar, you're going to finish, graduate from the prep school, if you are successful enough, of course. So you have two modules, which means that 16 weeks of studying until February. It's in your academic calendar, you can see it there. What can you do after that? Think about that, you're a very successful student, you have a good average of the two modules. At the end, you have your proficiency exam and you pass, right? Your two choices. The first choice of yours is to continue the program in the prep school, to become a C1 student and graduate with the C1 program. In this case, you have the third module and the fourth module to cover on as a C1 student. If you'd like to continue your program with the faculty department, then you can jump into your studies in your faculty departments. I'm saying it again, two choices. The first one is to continue the study in C1 in the prep classes, and the other is 
to go to the faculty departments, right? Okay, and by the way, our C program is a very popular program. Students love to enter in. And what about the learning outcomes? At the beginning of the year, so many of you, especially in A1 and A2 cases, have very low English, very low kind of English, let's say. Sometimes they can't write sentences, sometimes they can't utter just a single word in their mouths, but at the end of the program, after B2 program, I'm not talking about the C1, C1 is something very professional, it means that you can write 330 or 400 words essays. I'm talk talking about the techniques of the essays, something like argumentative, cause, effect, compare, contrast, advantage, disadvantage type of essays. And uh, by the way, you can also write more than 400 words. This is just the limit of it. And uh, we're using, of course, the authentic text. Then you can understand all of them. And uh, it means that you can file of your own articles in your own field, which is also going to be easy for you. And of course, you can take notes and understand the lectures. When you go to your faculty departments, it will be easier for you to understand them or not take notes about them. Okay. We're having the modular system, as you know. Well, we know that it's a difficult system when you just check it from the side of the teachers or side of the students, but it doesn't matter against all of, all us, against all of the disadvantages of it. It has a lot of advantages. And one of them is pushing you into the higher levels very easily. It forces you. It forces you and the teachers to go up and up for good implementation. All right. Any other things about the assessment system? In the first week, as you know, we generally have the orientation program and everything. On the other module, you'll see that the first week is something like an orientation. But on the third week, we're beginning with the quizzes, pop quizzes. These are short exams. And the average, the percentage of the pop quizzes is 10. We also have teacher assessment grade. That's also 10%. In the middle of the module, which is the fourth week of it, we have the in-module assessment, and it is 30%. At the end of the module, what is the end of the module, by the way? On which week? Tell me. How many weeks do we have in a module? Tell me, come on. Eight. Eight. What are you doing there? Are you listening? In eight weeks, the fourth week is what? In module assessment, a big exam, a compact exam. It has everything in it. Reading, writing, main course, listening. All together with the skills. On the eighth week, I mean at the end of the module, and the name is the same, end of module assessment, again we have a very big exam, including reading, writing, listening, and main course. We call main course or use of English as the grammar, of course. Are we all okay for that? And the percentage of that is 50. So. Beginning with the third week, we have exams. Fourth week, we have exams. Fifth week, we have exams. Sometimes sixth week or sometimes seventh week. Um, on week seven, we have exams. And on the eighth week, we have a big exam. It means that you have to attend all of the classes. You cannot miss any time 
during your studies, and you have to be ready for the exams, which will make you understand more about English. We're not trying to torture you, we're trying to make you develop more. Okay, and what happens? What else happens? As I told you, if you are an A1 and A2 student, it means that you have four modules. You're taking some exam results from the first module. Second, again, you have those exams. Third, you have, again, those exams. Fourth, you have, again, those exams. We are adding them into each other, and then we have the average of those four modules. Think about that, your B1 and B2 students. It means that we're taking the uh, academic um, arithmetical calculation of the first module and the second module. Then we have the average of it, and we're taking 60% <coughs> of that. Great. Are we all okay for that? But I said that 60% comes from your modules, okay? And what about that one? That's just one exam at the end of the year or in February, at the end of B2 or B1. You're also entering into that, and we're taking 40% of that exam. When they come together, they become 100. Am I right? Yeah. If you have 60 and over in that grade, that means you can pass. If it is less than 60, it means you can't pass. I'm saying it again. Your passing depends on not just that one and not just that one. Why am I saying this? Don't come to me complaining and saying that. Well, teacher, I got an 80 from the proficiency exam. God's sake, I want to pass. No, no. The answer for that question is no. If, think about that, your overall average in the modules is 20. Because 20 plus 80 means what 100? When you divide it into two, it becomes a 50. And 50 is not a passing grade. Do we understand each other? Do we? Say yes if you do. Loudly. Yes. Lovely. OK. OK. Let's continue, if I can. Yeah. Yeah, this will show you, well, yeah, I know that there are no A1 students, but for example, in A1, in module one, as you see, third week, we have two exams. What do we have on fourth week? Tell me. In module assessment, a big exam, right? Okay, week five, we have an exam. Week seven, we have an exam. Week eight, we have a big exam. Okay? And the modules are going like that. Let's check it with B1 and B2. The same. The same. This time, you have more exams. Because in writing, for example, you have a timed writing plus a graded process writing. I'll just detail them later on. So, and that is the fourth week's exam. I said you have four skills, then you have four components in the exam. And in the modules, as you can see, we're all assessing, we're all testing them. And in B1 and B2, the same. Nothing is isolated. If in your studies you have presentation, you're assessing it. 
if we have speaking, we, have we are assessing it. Okay, first you learn, then you are going to be assessed about it. And on the eighth week, again, you have the exam, and again, you have the four skills that you've learned so far. You look at the pie, again, you have the same thing. That's the teacher assessment grade taking from, coming from your teachers. That is the pop quizzes, the small, the short uh, exam style. That's the in-module assessment in the middle of the module. And that's the end of module assessment at the end of the module. OK? 10, 10, 30, and 50. Fair enough. And again, the end of year grade. Not just with proficiency exam results, but with the overall averages of the modules. You have, if you have 60 and over, it means congratulations. OK? Yeah, that's the proficiency exam. Some of you have entered it, uh, did enter it. and. Uh, you know, we have two reading passages inside it. A while listening, it's a bonus, by the way, for you. A note taking, a speaking part, and a writing part. You'll face with it again in February. And uh, by the way, you know that there is a sample of the proficiency exam on our website. You can always check it. What about the special cases? Or take a picture of that. Well, I know that you're, it's going to be recorded. You're going to be uh, watching it later on because it's recorded. But take a picture of it. If you are a B1 and B2 student, think about that. You're a very successful student. All modules long. I'm talking about module one and module two, of course. You have 85 and over on your average, all right, in all of your exams. It means that stress-free, no stress, nothing. We're telling you, you don't need to enter into the proficiency exam. As you wish, wish us anything. You can go to your faculty department, or you can study the C1 level studies. So it is for motivation. It is for making you more successful. And there are a lot of students who are trying to do that so. What about A1 and A2 students? I'm sorry, but they are basic learners. And a basic learner needs more time to learn things. So they have four modules to cover. But Think about that, you're an A2 level student, and you are very successful, really, amazingly. Think about that, your overall average is 90. What can you do? You can write a petition form to Sueda Hanum, and you can say that you want to be a B1 student. After a committee's decision, the testing office, your advisor, and some other people working on your own classroom come together, get a decision, get a decision about you, and if they say yes, you can be a B1 student. And it is like the domino stones. If you become a B1 student, and again, if you have that 85 in your hand, it means that you can also go to your faculty department without any proficiency exam. Preferable, right? So be successful. All right. OK, the balance. We are because the first module of the study is easy peasy. So it is 20%. And the last one, the last module is a bit difficult. Of course, that's the development part. We can see the implementation of you there. So it is 30%. What about B1 and B2 levels? They have just two modules, which means that 
they have equal balance in it. And the teacher assessment grade. That's a lovely grade, by the way, because the testing office gives your teachers at the beginning of the year a kind of a criteria. Do you know what the criteria is? I mean, on it, for example, um, there are some important information about you. Does the student do the homework on time? Is it a good quality homework? Or is it fake or plagiarized, taken from somewhere? Or things like that. Your teachers are filling on that form or that criteria according to your situation. They're mentoring you, of course. And then they get the results in their hands. And after all, they give you a kind of a grade, which affects you 10%. Inside it, there are the online homework, your participation. But when I say participation, especially on the online program, I don't mean that just turning on your computer and getting lost in the house or sleeping. I mean you have to be in front of your teacher watching your teacher very carefully, being very interactive in the classroom, communicating, going into the break rooms, doing exercises with your friends, that kind of attendance I'm talking about. That's not just attendance, also how you participate into the classroom. And the other thing is, uh, excluding the testing office exams, like the pop quizzes, like the in-module assessments and end-of-module assessments, you also are going to have exams, in-class exams, which are done the class teachers. You're also tested like that. And your teachers are going to use them on their grades. And the last thing about the teacher assessment in reading, use of English, and listening is about the vocabulary notebook and the journals that you're writing to your teachers. What about in writing? In writing, you also have your writing portfolio and others are the same. That writing portfolio is crucially important. And now the bands, the levels. B2, Islington, beginning with that I, it means that you come here as an intermediate student. So there is an association between the letters like intermediate and Islington. I mean, it gives us a kind of association, by the way. So you have 21 hours of class teaching, 21 hours, right? What about B1? B1 is the same. What about A2? You know that they have four modules. On the first two modules, they have 24 hours. On the second, third, I'm sorry, third and the fourth modules, they have 22 hours. In A1, module one and two, 25 hours. Module three and four, 23 hours. What about the repeat classes? Well, of course they are repeating. Well, of course they failed. And that's why they have 24 hours of teaching. They repeat the classes after the second module, when they become the third module student. And after the fourth module, so they have the fifth module, OK? Well, you can see the chart, the development of a student in your student handbook, too. So please read it when you have time, or find time to read it. In writing, again, that's the development. 
and the uh, lower classes beginning with the word, even the word, not the sentence, and going up into 350 words essays. In the very upper level, something like C1, you have paraphrasing, quotation, referencing, those kind of things also. And the class schedules, you know we have two shifts. We have the morning shift and the afternoon shift. A1 and A2s are in the morning shift, beginning at 8.30, ending up at 12.55. The afternoon people, like you, beginning at 1.15 and ending up at 5.40. These are B1 and B2 students. That is really important. Well, you know, we say that we're two kinds of programs. One is online, and the other is the hybrid program. In the online one, you choose, you chose it, it's okay, you can be online, but please listen to me very carefully. In the online learning, your cameras should always be on. Say it with me. My camera is going to be on. Come on. My camera is going to be on. Yeah. Language is for communication. You're learning this language for communication, to understand each other. No one likes to talk in front of a black hole. Am I right? For sure. And your teachers are really wondering and worrying about you. You will see that. They want to feel, sense, understand that you're learning. Without seeing anything, how can they feel it? It's a must. Otherwise, you'll be counted as absent. Be sure about that. This is number one. Number two, about, again, the online program. Yes, we are taking the attendance. It doesn't matter you're online or hybrid. Every lesson that you attend means that we're taking the attendance. Teacher, if I watch the online program on the recorded videos, can I be counted as present? No. We're talking about synchronized live lessons. As a student, your responsibility is to be in the lesson. If you're watching it on the recorded form, it means that you need to watch it again. You want to add something. You want to learn more. That's why they are recorded. Or let's say you were really very ill and you couldn't attend the class and you want to watch it. Yes, you can watch it anytime you want to but it doesn't make you present in the classroom. Are we all okay for that? Good. Okay. About the hybrid program. Well, after the survey, thank you very much, by the way, we understood that all of you want to come here. It was something like 96%? Yeah. So, uh, I can't understand that. You really want to feel that you're university students. That's very understandable. And it's an honor for us to make you be here. But there's a but here. The capacity of the classrooms. That's an issue. I mean, the capacity of the classrooms are very well designed for the normal, healthy lives. But in the pandemic situation, you know that we cannot put 25 or 26 students into a classroom for your health, 
for the teacher's health, for all of us health. So that is why we just divided the classroom into two in order to give everybody equal chance to be here. But it doesn't mean that you can't come here on the other days. You can always welcome. Like what? We have, I'm going to tell you, we have the learning center hours, writing center hours, speaking club activities. So after class, before class, you can be here. But at the minute of the lesson, if it is not your turn to come here, so you have to be online, some of you. And some of you will be hybrids. Another question coming from the students. Well, teacher, well, yeah, there were colors on the website saying that some of us will come to school on the 18th of October, and the other are coming on somewhere in November, 15 November, I guess so. Does that mean that my program begins on November the 15th? Absolutely not. We have a calendar. They announce it everywhere. We send you messages. It's written everywhere in the world that we began on the 18th of October. Did we begin on the 18th of October? Everybody tell me. Is there any classroom who didn't even begin right now teaching? No? So, everything began on the 18th of October. That November something means that now it's your turn to come into the classroom for the face-to-face -face education. Are we all okay for that? Say yes. yes. <laughs> Lovely. So, because we got uh, some kind of letters and complaints about some of the students, and they were right to say that, they wanted to, they're demanding, of course, they're asking or requesting, let's say, about having some more time in the university. You know, at the beginning, we announced that on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you'll be in the classrooms. And on Thursday and Friday, the system is going to be online for all. Remember that? OK. Now, after the request, we decided that we have Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday as the hybrid classes in between. What is in between? Wednesday, lovely. On Wednesday, we have the online program. That doesn't mean that the online people will have one day teaching. No. Other days, they're also getting their education in the classroom when the hybrid students, face-to-face -face students, are inside their classes. But for all of you, Wednesday is the day for the online classes. You're not coming to school. What for? We said that all of you are going to have the exams online, so we need that day. The other days, if you are in the hybrid program, just check it on the website and understand in which group you are in accordingly come to school. Other days, you are in the online program. Are we all OK for that? Lovely. And yes, all the lessons are recorded, by the way. And there was another question that the students were asking to me. I forgot it. Later on, maybe I can remember. Yeah. What is this? Let me see. If I can see it, of course. Hang on. No, the screen, I guess. 
Hello, you can hear me. Yeah, can you see the book list? Do you know where I found it? You see the green line there? There it is written, administrative information. Okay, click on it, then there appears the book list. Click on the book list, there are three items there. Cambridge, National Geographic, and Macmillan. In A1 and A2, the majority goes to Cambridge publisher. In B1 and B2, uh, there is equality, I believe, because you have one main course book from Cambridge, you have reading book from Macmillan, and you have listening book from NatGeo, National Geographic. Okay. Try to understand which books you're going to buy. Then buy your books. I don't want you to buy wrong books. That's why we put the book list there. All right. That is number one. What is number two about the books? These are A1 books, by the way. As you can see, there are, how many books are they? There are 12 books, and yes, that Pearson issued certificates. But that doesn't mean that in the first module, a student is responsible of buying and studying all of those 12 books. It's impossible physically. As you see, it's written modules here, right? Can you see that? OK. It means that in the first module, these people, these A A1 people, are going to buy those ones. One, two, three. Module two, again, three books. One, two, three. Module three, again, one, two, three. Module four, one, two, three, and the Pearson certificates. You can buy the Pearson for certificate anytime you'd like to, by the way. About B1 and B2, let's say. A2 seems uh, very similar to that one. But as you see here, it is written, no books to be continued. Then it means that uh, in module four, they don't need to buy any books. In B1, in module one, you have three books. Module two, you have three books. And you have a Pearson Assured Certificate. A1 had 12 books. B1 has six books. What is the difference? What is the difference? Two modules. Lovely. You have two modules, they have four modules. Your English is better than them, their English is lower than you. They need more development with more modules. You need, you need also more development, let's say. Okay. <laughs> okay, I don't want to say that word. <laughs> okay. In MB2, in module one, you have three books. Module two, you don't have any books. Why? Because you're continuing the books. The books haven't finished yet at that time. All right. You can do two things. I'm talking about all of the students of the prep. Either as an A1 and A2 student, because at the end you can, you can study all of them. You can buy all of the books in a pack. A year-long study. All right. Or you can buy which ones are necessary for module one. It depends on yourself, on your budget. It's not our business to tell you or force you to buy the books when. But I can force you for one thing. 
What is that? Well, you need books to study. It means that you have to buy your books. This is number one. And you have to buy the original books. This is number two. Because we're using the online program, and you need the codes on the books. All right. So buy your books. Another thing, not about the books, by the way. That one. Here you can see, can you see, can you see the arrows here? Huh? Can you see the arrows? Good. It says student book. OK? Everybody is asking me some questions about the program, about everything, about prep school. Don't do that. Go to our website. That's our website, hazirlikisgudar.edu.tr. Go there. Find the student book. By the way, it is Turkish, English, and Arabic. Choose the language and read it. All right. I need to do the same joke. Because I don't know Arabic, that's why I'm not very sure about what is written on the Arabic version of it. But I checked the English and the Turkish version, so I'm very sure about them. So if you find a way to read it in English, it will it'll be preferable, by the way. And I believe some of the classrooms have chosen their class representatives. Is that right? I need these representatives. If you haven't done that yet, please go to your classroom and uh, make an election. Find yourself a responsible, hardworking person to represent you. We are going to have we're always doing that, by the way, in every module. Meetings with those representatives. These representatives are your voices. They'll come to me and talk about your complaints, your wishes, about you, your own classroom. So it's really very important. OK. And your advisors, another very important people. Your advisors, generally they are your main course teachers who can see you more in the classroom. You can share your problems, your complaints, your wishes with them again. They are responsible of solving your problems. And they are also responsible when there is something more important to tell it to me and the testing office. Okay. Write to them. You know their mail address very well because they're on the website. And I'm very sure that they will give the response or answer you immediately. When I say immediately, I don't mean that a minute later, of course. Sometimes, well, let's gossip. I know that there are some students writing sometimes to me at 2 AM in the morning, and they're waiting for an they're waiting for a response. So be or limit yourself into normal standard lifetimes. OK. But I'm very sure that they will give a response a day later, maximum. And these are our mail addresses, again, you know them very well. That is our assistant, Sueda. This is my dearest Leon Hoja from Testing, Testing Coordinator. And this is me. By the way, don't go anywhere, listen to me. By the way, I have a problem with you. Whenever you give me, you write to me, I always answer. I do. And you know that very well, because uh, we become like 
pen pals. You're writing, I'm responding. You're writing, I'm responding. Although this is the situation, you sometimes prefer to write or duplicate your writing to call center. Why are you doing that? Because all of them come to me at the end, and I'm answering them. So please make a shortcut. Write to me and Sueda. If you believe that we didn't solve the problem, then of course, anytime you want to, you can write to Chosun Merkeze, to the Solution Center. But, again, we have a but. What is that but? The question cannot be this. Teacher, I was sleeping at the time of the exam. I want to take the exam again. Whenever you write, in which stage, in, in which department you will write this, the answer is going to be no. You cannot take it again. Or, teacher, the class hours are too many. We just want to be here for 10 hours. No. So, write some reasonable things. All right. Or think about that you entered into the proficiency exam, you couldn't pass, and you're asking for favor, saying that, Hojam, can I take the proficiency exam again? The answer is no. It is under rules and regulations, and it is again on our website. It is accepted by our Board of Trustees in the Senate, so it is not something changeable. It doesn't differ from person to person, or how many times you write to me. The answer is always no. So let's understand each other. We are setting the rules, we are obeying our rules, and we are expecting you to obey the rules as responsible, successful, lovely students. Okay? One moment. If it is finished, no. Is it really very important to say? Maybe you can forget about it. Is that the situation? Somebody was holding hands? No? Okay. And these ones, these ones. The Learning Center, the Speaking Club, and the Writing Center. These are all very popular activities. Yeah, I told you that in B1 and B2, you have 21 hours of teaching, studying, or learning. And in A1 and A2, you have 25, 24 hours of studies. But that doesn't mean that. That's the only thing you can do at school. After school for A1 and A2, and before school hours for B1 and B2, I mean in the morning, you can, and I'm sure that you will, attend the learning centers, the speaking club, and the writing center. What for? Especially when it is before the exam, in module exam, end of module assessment. You are desperately in need of some more lessons. Or think about that, uh, you can catch up with the students, something went wrong. I mean, you didn't understand or you don't understand some subject or topic. Then, any time, it doesn't ma matter that how many hours you'd like to, you can ask your advisors to organize you, plan you about the learning center, which is about main course and reading classes, the writing center, about the writing classes, of course, and the speaking club. Speaking class is extremely popular. Our faculty students are still entering into it because it is fun also. It, that speaking club is not a class hour. Others are also not class hours. They are for your own sake. 
in order to make yourself develop more. Okay? And the writing exams. I told you we have two types of writing exams. One is the timed writing and the other is the graded process writing. Timed writing is something limited in 50 minutes or 60 minutes. It depends on if you're writing a paragraph or an essay. You know, in the paragraphs, my voice is good. In the paragraphs, like that. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Uh, where you have shorter time. In the essay type, because you're writing something more in essays, then you have 60 or 70 minutes time. And that is the timed writing. The other one is a little bit complicated. But we believe that you can learn things by errors. So it really helps the students to implement themselves in writing. It has two stages. First, you're writing your first draft in the exam situation. And the, the teacher of yours are just collecting them, going home, and putting the error correction symbols on them. The error correction symbols are the symbols which canalize you or direct you to write better in writing. Something like you believe, for example, there is a problem in the article. So it says art. For example, you didn't say that you, the students, but you say a students, let's say. So there is a fault in it, right? Things like that. So after all, your teacher, again, in the exam situation, gives you back the, teach it gives you back the papers, your exam papers. And then, by checking the error correction symbols on your papers, you're trying to rewrite it. It's a very nice process. It makes you understand how to write the essays. And it's also a kind of bonus to you. Why? Because they are graded. We're giving you grades for that. Use it efficiently. And what else do we have? We have, if I can, yeah. These are the modules we talked about it. That's the summer school. Yeah, we have the official summer school for the repeat speed students after school, I mean, after June. And the attendance, yes, I said, you must attend the classes for 80%. And think about that, you, don't, you didn't do that. And it is time for failure. And what are we doing? We are taking your hand to enter into the end of module assessment which is 50%. Think about that you have had all of the exams in your hands. It is just the 50% of the program. And because of absenteeism, you cannot enter into the end of module assessment. It means that you're failing. Don't do this to yourself. OK, don't. What else? The academic calendar, where can you find the academic calendar? Where is that? Nowhere around? Where is it? On the website. Which website? You see? Look at here. Look at here. It's there. It is not something changeable. Very specific. The dates are on it. Very clear. So never and ever come and tell or email or send messages saying that, well, I have no idea about where or when we're going to take the exam. Finally, somehow I understand that there was an exam on that day. No. The dates are very clear, and it's on the calendar. Here it is. You can find it. Look at the arrow. It's there. OK? Find it. 
And in any case, your teachers, your advisors, will send you the time of the exams, for sure, on sticks, on WhatsApp messages, on the website announcements, and everywhere. But it is there right now. Yes. Happy that we finished. OK, now, uh, yes. Uh, very important thing. Don't go anywhere. You know, this week, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday program at school, right? So we have just Friday in our hands to have the online program. Is that right? Right. So for this week, just for this week, tomorrow is the online day. What will happen next week? Wednesday is online. What about the other days? Face to face. OK. Any questions, guys? Yes, please. Uh, please, I am uh, A2 student. I want to be C student. How the best way? What's the saying? I couldn't understand. I am a uh, A2 student. You are an A2 student. Yeah, I want no, to go be. step by step. You're an A2 student. Yes. I want to be a C student. C. You want to study in C? Yeah, but uh, half come. C. And mathematically and physically, they don't have a chance of doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. But don't worry. If you want to be a C student, I will teach it to you by myself. Okay. Come to that point, and we will talk about it. OK. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope we all have a successful year. I'm wishing this for all of us.